DGK Dangerous Dog Series, Kimbo's Sons. A deadly dog attack takes the life of a four-year-old Homa girl, and now family, friends, and neighbors are left to wonder how and why this could happen. From speaking to some of the officers on scene, they described him as a, as a monster. This was a big dog. Police say the attack happened last night at the apartment complex where the little girl and her mother were staying. This video is dedicated to Mia De Ruin and her loving family, R.I.P. We are so sorry for your loss, R.I.P. to an angel. Mia was transported to Terrebonne General where she died of her injuries. It won't bring back the child. It was a horrible thing that happened, but it could have been prevented. She's right. This actually could have been prevented, but only if the breeder discloses that his dog is producing human aggressive offspring. Then this family wouldn't have been blindsided. My daughter at the time when we got him was, I think she was making three or she just, she just made three maybe. Oh, so she was really young. Did he, did he, wa young. did he warm up to her at all? Did he ever? Yeah, like, I mean, like, literally, that was like her dog. Like. Wow, I, mean, I, I didn't know I that. It, like how, that's why, I mean, even to this day, we still like, what the fuck happened? She heard him bark again. So she looked at him and she was like, Nico, what, what, what's wrong? She's like, nobody's outside. Cool, calm down or whatever. And she, she looked at him again and she just saw this look in, her eye, in his eyes that she had never saw ever before. Like, it was just like completely different from what she was used to of him because he was a completely sweet dog. And she said something, her instinct just told her to get in the bedroom. And is, is that where your daughter was at the time? My daughter was in between, my daughter was like standing right, kind of right by her. She, they had, she had that music on, they were dancing. What the daughter was dancing while she was folding clothes. So she said, when she looked at him, that her daughter was in between her and him, but he was like kind of in the living room. And she said, when she, when she, she saw it, she heard some, something that just saw her instincts to just close the door of the bedroom where she was folding clothes at, but pull her daughter in. And she as she was closing the door, like he just bust through the fucking door, like somebody had called him. Neighbors said they could hear the screams of four-year-old Mia De Ron as police say her family's two-year-old pit bull, Nico, attacked her for reasons still unknown as she watched TV, then attacked her mother, identified as Megan Touche, before she was able to pull the child away from the dog and barricade herself and her daughter inside a bedroom. My daughter was like right on side of her. So there was nothing like, not like, not like she was like picking with him or touching him, like wasn't even near him. It's just something like it just switched. Like she said, it was like a fucking demon possessed him. Just, you know, it, it's crazy to say that, but it, it's what it was like. Like he just got possessed all of a sudden, and he just bust through the fucking door. She tried to close it. She was trying to, like she, she said in his mind, he wanted her. The reason, the only reason why I didn't have one of your dogs, <laughs> because and I, I should have in the beginning, but it was like. Uh, don't want to spend this money, kind of type thing. Even with Nico, that kind of just fell into my lap. I don't know, and it, you know, I, I wasn't actually at that point looking for a dog. It was just I was looking to expand a little bit. I wanted a different bloodline. Didn't think about that bloodline, you know. I didn't, you know, know the ins and outs, but I just wanted something different. Whereas, honestly, I wish I'd have came to somebody like you. Just, cause not saying, you know, most likely my life would still been normal. Cause honestly, bro, like. The past four years of my life have been fucking no. It's like time stopped four years ago, and maybe I honestly about six months ago we just started living again. There have been many documented deadly pit bull attacks. Some were because of irresponsible owners, and others are the result of a bad bloodline that carried human aggressive traits. Yes, there are certain bloodlines that carry human aggression, otherwise known as the HA trait. Dogs with this pedigree will attack family and friends unprovoked. 
Unfortunately, this is not a myth. Some bloodlines are unstable. As a responsible established breeder, our job is to identify those bloodlines and warn the public and fellow breeders about the matter. This is why I have created the Dangerous Dogs documentary series. Some breeders are well aware of the human aggression in the bloodlines they breed, but do not care about anything but money. Even when children lose their lives, they continue breeding the stud who created the child killer, putting more families at risk. Let me introduce ourselves first. We are Big Gemini Kennels. Big Gemini Kennels, aka BGK, has been producing the largest infamous huge blue pit bulls or American bullies for the last decade. BGK has always been known for producing dogs with incredibly sound and stable temperaments. Big Gemini's dogs are both affectionate with children as well as fierce guardians of their family. The BGK bloodline is well known for the size, beauty and awesome personalities of their dogs. This is why it pays to research these dogs before bringing a huge pit bull or American bully into your home. Your family's safety is top priority. The first dog we will focus on in the Dangerous Dog series is registered with the United Kennel Club as UKC's Most Wanted Kimbo. In the pit bull bully community, he is often called Killer Kimbo. Over the years, there has allegedly been many documented vicious attacks and deaths of humans from his offspring and their offsprings as well. This human aggressive trait that allegedly is connected to Kimbo's bloodline has passed from generation to generation. Allegedly, all attacks were unprovoked and random with good owners and positive environments. In this episode of Dangerous Dogs Killer Kimbo series, we explore the incident in which Nico, a 130-pound son of Kimbo viciously attacks and kills an innocent three-year-old girl, completely unprovoked. Her stepfather has agreed to give a personal interview, explaining the attack as well as the events surrounding the matter. Our condolences go out to the family for the loss of such a beautiful little girl. Yeah, he never, I mean, honestly, it was 100% uh, shot to us. But like you said, after it happened, I started hearing from people that were like, oh man, it's awesome as dog. People would meet him. I mean, he was 20 points away from being a, a champion in ABKC. Like, we went all over with the dog. We're like, oh, I didn't know that. So he was around. actually being shown. Yeah, the dog was, I mean, he was around everybody. Like, nobody, everybody that knew him personally that met, met the dog, they were like completely fucking shocked. Yeah, yeah, we went, we went all over, man. I mean, we ride in one vehicle, me, my wife, two kids, the dog, you know, like, this is like, he lived in the fucking house. He never, never stepped outside one night. I honestly, I, like I said, she's, we both don't know. She said, it's just one day it clicked. But after this shit happened, everybody that knew him and were like, oh man, Kimbo blood is fucked up. I'm like, well, none of y'all fucking asses told me this shit before. I mean, I didn't know, you know what I mean? Honestly, yeah. your situation was the first that really put it on my radar. Like, whoa, hold up. This is not just talk. There's something going on here. Yeah, exactly. You know, um, he looked like a real good looking dog. He was an awesome ass dog. I ain't gonna lie to you. I, I, it just, as, as, as she says, because I wasn't home at the time. So uh, up until then, honestly, only, I can't even say we saw signs even. It was just. He was a protective dog of us, like any other dog, like my other dogs were. My other dog would fucking, he see somebody, he want to tear the ass up. But this, like him, he just, he wasn't even about this shit. I used to, honestly, I used to clown him all the time. Like, man, you big pussy. I used to clown him all the time, dude, because he would never, like, fuck with anybody like that. So for that to happen, it's just, I have no no idea why or if it could have been prevented. I mean, the only thing could have prevented, honestly, it was just, Leave his ass in the cage outside. Honestly, I had to interrupt you for this part. Like, I personally don't believe it's your fault at all. I don't believe that you hold any liability because I've done a lot of research and that blood, like a lot of the traits that we're talking about, basically the trait is human aggression, um, okay. has been shown to come from his blood so many times that it's impossible for all these people that have no connection, don't know each other, and they love the dog enough to spend money on it. I'm sure you didn't get the dog for free. 
so you know, I, I so paid two grand for the dog. Exactly, you paying two grand yeah. for the dog, so I know you're not going to buy your dog at that cost and then treat it like crap. Hell no. It just doesn't make sense. Dog is, dog is damn near hand fed, dude. Like we, I mean, we, we went to the butcher every two weeks. We got food. We we hand grounded up ourselves and with our mixer. Like the dog fucking ate great. I mean, like he was. All his testing was done at Louisiana State University. Like all his heart testing, his pin hip. Like the dog was fucking treated like a king. So like there was no way, there was no reason for him to do what he did. Pretty much, what I'm saying. I believe you. I know this is probably going to be the most difficult part, but if you don't mind, could you take me to that day? How did the events transpire prior to the attack, during the attack, and after? Um, before, she said, like, it was a normal day. They were just around the house doing laundry. Um, she fed them, walked them as normal. Uh, in that moment, she said she heard him, um, he barked. And she said she heard him bark, so she looked outside, nobody was there. She said she looked at him, and she was like, boy, shut up. He was in the house? He was in the house with your wife? Who all was in the house? Uh, my wife, my daughter, and my, I had, I just got a little, uh, I had a puppy. They got a puppy. But she was, she was about six months old. She had been there a while. But anyway, um, and she was in the house, and my wife said she was just, like, they all were just chilling. Like, like we normally do, like... Usually when I walk home from work, like they're all just like laid out on the floor, like or if they're not in the kennels. But anyway, she said at that point, um, she went back to folding clothes and she heard him bark again. And so she looked at him and she was like, Nico, what, what what's wrong? She's like, Nobody's outside. Cool, calm down or whatever. And she said she looked at him again and she just saw this look in her eye in his eyes that she had never saw ever before. Like it was just like completely different from what she was used of him because he was a completely sweet dog. And she said something, her instinct just told her to get in the bedroom. And is, she, is that where your daughter was at the time? My daughter was in between, but daughter was like standing right, kind of right by her. She, they had, she had that music on, they were dancing. What well, the daughter was dancing while she was folding clothes. So she said when she looked at him, the, her daughter was in between her and him, but he was like kind of in the living room. And she said when she when she, she saw it, she heard some something that just saw her instincts to just close the door of the bedroom where she was folding clothes at, but pull her daughter in. And she said, as she was closing the door, like he just bust through the fucking door, like somebody had called him or something, and it just just happened. Like, so when he burst through the door, did he immediately start attacking? Yeah, your, like, your three year old stepdaughter. Like he was just in hindsight, she said now she know that's what she said she don't know what. She, she was right there, not like she was like in another room in the house. Like I thought it was like right outside her. So there was nothing. Like, it's not like, not like she was like picking with him or touching him. Like wasn't even near him. It's just something like it just switched. Like it, she said, it was like a fucking demon possessed him. Just, you know, it, it's crazy to say that, but it's what it was like. Like he just got possessed all of a sudden, and he just bust through the fucking door. She tried to close it. She was trying to, like she, she said in his mind, he wanted her, like. Her daughter, like, cause she tried to put her her arm in his mouth, and he didn't want it. Like, she got cut marks on, well, bite marks on her arm. From like when you say he her. wanted her, you mean as far as when he was attacking, that was the focus of his attack. Yeah, that was just like he didn't like. There was nothing else. She she said she was everything she was trying to do, like trying to make him like attack her, like calling him, hitting him, putting her hand in his mouth as he bite her fucking daughter. Like he he would not hurt her at all. He wanted her daughter. Wow, so he busted through the door, she shut the door, and then he begins attacking your stepdaughter, who's three years old, and then your wife is, like, trying to back him off, and she's even putting her arm in his mouth. She's doing everything she can to stop this attack. So what what happens from there? Um, from there, from what I understand, it just got to a point to where she finally was able to get my... Uh, Stepped out away from him, and she put her on a bed. They, they both got on a bed. Where all had she he said, bit her at this point? Where was she bitten? The the stepdaughter. Yeah. Oh, he he like, went straight for her neck. Oh it was, like, man. Yeah, I mean, I hate to be graphic, but honestly, it was before she put her on a bed, she was dead. Wow. Like, he went straight for it, and like, I mean, she was a little three year old girl, and he was a hundred and thirty five pounds at the time. And he, we worked him out all the fucking times. So he was pretty much solid muscle. So all the fighting and shit she did to him, I mean, you know. I mean, honestly, even me being there, 
I could have helped because I, you know, I went through all that shit. Like, yeah, I fucking should have been home. I shouldn't have been at work. But I mean, you know, you got to work to provide for your yeah. family, man. You, uh, that's self guilt, yeah. and that's normal. Yeah. I mean, you lost a three year old daughter after he attacked her. Obviously, you said unfortunately she had passed by the time she was placed on the bed because he went straight for her neck when he busted <laughs> in the door. What happened after she was placed on the bed? What was the next events? Um, she tried. She tried calling me, but of course I was at work because I, I, I had like seven missed calls from her. But uh, she tried calling me. She tried. Well, she called the uh, the cops or whatever. And uh, she called. She called the ambulance. She, said. she called the uh, ambulance. They came, and I guess they came with the cops also. She said whenever the ambulance got there, she climbed through the window, the bedroom window. We had a bedroom window that was like, you can go outside. So she got out through the bedroom window and uh, he was still in the house. So when she was going downstairs, the cops got there and she said, she told him to, to, to shoot him. Tacoma Police Chief Todd DePlantis said his officers had no choice but to end the animal's life once the dog came after them only minutes after attacking the four-year-old little girl. It looks like it's about 12 shots. We had two shots inside, and it took 10 shots outside to stop the dog. The dog wasn't stopped to the end. Weird situation, man. I mean, honestly, I ain't gonna lie to you. On that day, and my wife will tell you this, like, we lost two kids that day. Because that was like our fucking kid, man. Like, in the time we had him, he grew on us like a fucking fungus. That dog was literally by our side everywhere we went. If he went to the store, we always took him for a ride. Like, so we lost two kids that day. So anybody that can see some dumb shit, they don't, they don't know. Like, we love that fucking dog. And it was even now, like, me talking about it now, you can kind of hear it. It's fucking, it choked me up a little bit. I'm, I'm, I'm extremely fucking, sorry for your loss. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to talk to you is so I can start documenting things like this and protect other people from that same potential problem. But I can only imagine how hard it has to be for you. And I don't take that lightly and I don't take that for granted. So I don't want you to take that yeah. in any no, type of I mean, way. I, honestly, I didn't know what, you know, you, you want to talk about. But honestly, I, I appreciate that you are trying to educate people on because... Obviously, like you said, and like I've heard from so many other people, you know, but not not as eloquent as you're putting it, just from people who talking shit. Like, man, kid, fuck Kimbo, Kimbo fucked up, and I'm like, okay, well, why nobody's stepping up and saying this? Everybody's like, you know, but the same people that say that shit, if you give them a puppy, they take it. I've wanted to talk to you for a long time, but I, I know that that's got to be a difficult subject, so I wanted to wait until, you know... Yeah. And and I didn't know if you would even be comfortable now. I want to wait until, you know, some time had passed to reach out yeah. for you. And this is definitely a genuine thing. This is a project that I'm working on. It's called Dangerous Dogs. And I'm going into a lot of the pit bull attacks that have happened and why. I really appreciate it. But honestly, man, you're about the only person I've talked to since all this shit happened that has been a positive conversation. It's always been like, man, fuck this, you know, blah, blah. And I'm always like, man, I'm not even... You know, I ain't about all that shit, really. Well, I lied, I read him twice. I take that back. Um, the lady from uh, Mississippi, who was uh, training uh, my dog Cash, I gave her. Um, she had a female, old races is female. We had better with her. Um, she said the female that she kept ended up being a little, a little crazy, and she put her down like at a young age. It was a little black female. A pretty that little means that female. that was in the blood. Exactly. And the other guy. Um, he moved back to uh, California. His name was Donald. He was living out here. He, uh, I heard from my friend who had hooked us up to do the breeding that um, the dog, like his puppies were a little crazy also. To be honest, he, he wasn't like, it's not like he had like family around. It was just him. So he, he kind of liked that shit. But you know, to get the story out and help other people, like, I have no problem with that at all. Because that's, that's exactly what, because honestly, I wish this was around before I bought my dog.